Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank you today for your presence. Mm. We honor your presence among mm. us, and we thank you with all of our hearts for all the wonderful blessings and the outpourings and everything that you've done for us. You are so good and your mercy endures forever. Father, we thank you for this broadcast today. Manifest yourself as you will. This place belongs to you, sir. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to join me today in welcoming a very, very special guest, Dr. Morris Cerullo. Brother Copeland, it's a delight to be here with you. Well, thank you, sir. This I, is like a special I, place. I, like I told you before we got on, on the air, I've been wanting you in that chair for a long oh, time now. You. And I'm so blessed thank that you're you. here. There, there's, oh my, there's so much that we want to talk about. I, I'd like to, uh, to begin by reading in the last chapter of the book of Mark, where Jesus spoke and set the course for mm. the body of Christ. Just, just at the, the last moments before he ascended. Mm. And he said, beginning with the 15th verse, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned or condemned. These signs shall follow them that believe. Mm. In my name shall they cast out devils. Mm. They shall speak with new tongues. Yes. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it'll not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. <laughs> I don't know of another preacher of the gospel anywhere that has done more to fulfill this than Morris Cerullo. Thank you, sir. And it's, uh, his. <laughs> The flow of the the flow of his ministry is, is unique, and it, it's something that that <laughs> all of us wish we had thought of. <laughs> of course, I know you didn't think of it. The the Lord instructed you to to, yeah. to do this. The man's been in the ministry over seventy years, and I've I've known him over well over thirty of that yeah, seventy, boy. and uh, we've become very close over the years. But now, you could go, for instance, into any city and preach to the people in that city. Now, if you did that in every major city of the world, it still would not be as effective mm as going to that city and bringing in ministers from all over that country and literally training those preachers mm. to preach the gospel. Amen. And, and that's, the, that's what Brother cerullo has been doing. That's what his ministry has been doing all these years, which meant instead of reaching the city, he reached the nation. Absolutely. And it has grown and it has grown and it has grown. And I've been privileged to, to uh, be a, a, a small part of that. And it has it's blessed me beyond measure. Now, 
He has also, oh my, 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 I'm telling you, I, we're going we're gonna to talk about the, the book of his life here before the program's over, but I mean, you just, you just read this and it's, he's, he's seen miracles and, and miracle healings, They're just, just outstanding things. But one of the most outstanding miracles that, that I, I know of mm. has happened to him. And just, just, I mean, just he's recently, not. just the last few yeah. uh, weeks and a couple of months ago or so. And so we're going to be talking about that. And I want you to get ready because I don't care what's the matter with you. You're going to get your healing. Praise <laughs> God. If you just, all you got to do is, is receive it because it belongs to you. Well, Brother Copeland, you reckon it's God's will? You think he wants you to be sick? Well, someone told me that. Well, someone lied to you then because the Word Absolutely. of God doesn't say that. Jesus said, I came down from heaven <laughs> not to do my own will, mm -hmm. but the will of him that sent me. Yes. And you go search the Bible yourself and find out and see if Jesus told anybody that God put that sickness on them or that they had to have that sickness for a while or that God was trying to teach them something. No. You know what he said? He said, your faith made you whole. Mm -hmm. So anybody that would believe it, they get it. They get it. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. That's just wonderful, isn't it? You know, Kenneth, this is one of my most favorite scriptures that you read today in all the Bible. Not only to start at the 15th verse, but it's an answer to the first 15 verses. In the Gospel of St. Mark, the 16th chapter, you'll find the story of not one believer, including Mary Magdalene, including the mother of Jesus, that believed he was going to be resurrected. Not one. Not one. And this story tells it here in this 16th chapter how that early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. They said, who's going to roll this stone away? Now, what were they doing there if they believed he was going to be That's resurrected? Right. That's right. They expected to find him in the grave. Who's going to roll the stone away? They entered the sepulcher. I'm just going to paraphrase it. They saw a young man sitting on the right side, and he said, don't be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth. He's risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they have laid him. Go your way. Tell his disciples, tell Peter, he goes before them into Galilee. You're going to see him. The angel makes a promise as he said unto you. That means the angel is testifying that before Jesus went away, he told he you, told you, I'm coming out of the grave. I'm going to be resurrected. Now, they go out. Look at the eighth verse. They went out. They fled from the sepulcher. They trembled. They were amazed. Now, I want to ask you a question, all right? Yes, sir. If an angel of God stood here, you saw him, you heard him, and he said, Morris, Kenneth, go down this street. You'll find a little house, somebody in there sick and afflicted, go in there, lay hands on them. What would you do? I'd go down there. Would you really? I'm, I'm, I believe I would. <laughs> All right. Amen. Not these disciples. I know, that's right. Neither did they say 
anything. The angel who appeared to the women gave them the instruction. He's going to fulfill the word that he said to you. He will rise. They walked out of the sepulcher, and what does it say? They didn't tell anybody. Ma, 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 ma. Now, Jesus was risen the ninth verse, the first day of the week. He appeared to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Now she goes and she tells them that had been with Jesus, those that mourned with him, those that wept, and when they heard that he was alive, what is the last verse, part of that verse says? They didn't believe it. And what have we got? We got a, a group of close followers, women, disciples. They all hear the message now that Jesus is risen, but they look at those that testified who had seen him and heard the angel, and they're giving the testimony. And they say, we don't believe it. My, my. Now, these are the people, Kenneth, that he is depending upon to reach the world. Mm. And you think of all these people that are watching the Believer's Voice of Victory today. What an incredible army. God could have if you could give divine impartation to them so that when they got to the 15th verse and he says, go ye into all the world. Look, who's going to go? These unbelievers, these that say, I will not believe. One, one, more, one more place, one more time. Can I, can I do sure, one more? Absolutely. All right. And afterward, he, meaning Jesus, right, mm -hmm. appeared in another form to two of them. And they went. Now, we've got the women testifying about the angels and the empty tomb. The men have heard about it. They say, we won't believe. Now, two others see him, and they go and they tell it in the 13th verse to the residue. In other words, in other words all the rest, right? Mm -hmm. And what does it say? They didn't believe it either. Neither believed they them. How are we going to reach the world? with these that are unbelievers who have seen the resurrected Lord, heard him speak to them. But they say, we don't care. We don't believe it's real. Now, the next scene, you read it. They're sitting together at me. Jesus comes through the closed doors, right? Comes through the wall, mm -hmm. stands there in front of them, and this, this is what blows my mind. This is why God has asked me, build me an army. Raise me up, men and women, that will have the anointing, have the divine capability, to do what? To prove to the world, Amen. I am not in the grave. Amen. Witnesses that have evidence. A ability to do it. So now, you read it. He said to them, when he went into the room, he said, go ye into all the world. Go on. Now, 
I wouldn't. When I send these unbelievers, when I send these no good renegades who walk with him, who saw him open the eyes of the blind, unstop the ears of the deaf, raise the dead. And now he himself appeared to them in his resurrected body and the angels appeared to them and the testimony is the same. They believed not, they believed not, they believed not. And now Jesus comes into that room Go into all the world, preach the gospel. I wouldn't send them. You probably have more faith than I do. But Jesus looked at him, and here's the key. When he saw them, he was not depending on what they were. And Jesus is not depending on what you are or what you possess. He's depending on only one thing. What can I make of you? Amen. Amen. And when I touch your life, and when my anointing comes into your life, when the Holy Spirit which is in me, and that Holy Spirit that raised me from the dead dwells in you, you'll go out and then you'll do these works. Yeah. Because of him, these signs are gonna follow you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because he's changed you. Yes from a doubter, from a questioner, to one without question, goes forth. And like Jesus said, as my Father sent me, so send I you. Amen. And they grabbed a hold of it. They became proof producers. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, that, that comes right, it, it comes right back to our, our front door. Amen. We have to do this. But, just take Peter, for example. Run, hide, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, so did the rest of them. Yes. Me. But then, oh man. Then after the day of Pentecost, it was a totally different story, wasn't it? Because of the greater one that came and, and the anointing that came on them when they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Change. Absolutely. That's what we need. Inside out change. We need to be changed. Praise God. And you know, the wonderful thing about it is we're not alone. We think it all depends on us, but it really doesn't. No. Remember what Jesus said to Peter? You're a renegade. You're going to deny me. And Peter, of course, he was that, you know, strong man. No, me, no, I never do. He said, you will, but he said, Peter, I want to tell you something. I prayed for you. Praise God. Amen. I pray that you would not fail. And so, remember, we're never alone. We're called, we're chosen, and he's praying for us consistently that we will be what he was to his Father, and he gives us the ability to be him. You know, I did, I did essentially the same thing. When uh, <clears throat> in, 
I accepted the Lord as my Savior in the first part of November of 1962. Gloria and I had been married about six months. And um, she got saved a couple of weeks before I did. And I, I knew. I knew almost immediately what I was supposed to do. I knew it when I was a teenager. Yeah. And I didn't want to do it. No. So, and there were some things happened. The devil made sure that there were some things happened that enforced that in me. And I won't go into that. But, but when I should have been at Oral Roberts University, I knew I was, I knew I was supposed to go there. Mm -hmm. I should have been there in 1963 instead of 1967. Hmm. So all of 63, all of 64, all of 65, and I, or uh, let me put it this way, I should have been when the, the, in the first class. Mm -hmm. That class graduated while I was there, but I enrolled in school that last semester. So I, I got to watch that class graduate. I should have been there that whole four year period. Mm. I, was that, I was that late to coming to work. <laughs> yeah. But same reason, I didn't want to go to school. And I, I kept thinking, what am I going to do? I can't do that. I, I never was all that hot in school in the first place. Mm. And, 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 and I don't like it, but I mean, what, how, how am I, how am I going to do this with, with, with little children and, and all that? How can I do this? I can't do it. Mm. So I'm thinking the same thing. Absolutely. I can't do that. I can't do that. And when I finally figured out I can't do it, <laughs> that's when it changed. But, uh, the, the idea that I have to provide for my children. Mm -hmm. I have to do this. I have to do that. Mm -hmm. Rather than trust God mm -hmm. to do it. And that's where so many mm -hmm. failures happen. Right there. And we're out of time. Oh, <laughs> oh praise God. Brother Mars and I'll be back in just a moment. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.